I would give anything to be a guitar maker. John came from truly humble beginnings. Made guitar one, sold it. Made guitar two, sold it. And next thing you know, I'm a guitar maker. The thing that makes Larve unique is tight-fitting craftsmanship. It's the construction, the method with which it's made that makes the guitar special. The guitar that we make today is the best Larrabee ever made. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater, and I am super excited today. We have Larrabee guitars in the house. We've got Jean and Matt here. It's great to have you guys here, Light the namesakes. Thank you Larrabee. very much. Yeah. Real pleasure to have you guys joining the Sweetwater family with these incredible guitars. Oh, we're, we're very stoked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I was fascinated to, uh, to see how far the roots of the company go back to the, the master classical guitar builders back in mm -hmm. the day and, and uh, the way you started out as an apprentice, classical guitar maker. Yeah, I can answer that. Yeah, I mean, basically I was a guitar player. Mm -hmm. You know, I started off as a mechanic. Do you believe that? An auto mechanic. And then finally I, I got very interested in guitar, even as a young man. And so what I did is uh, I, bought, I bought a guitar for 12 bucks. 12 bucks, yeah. nice. Yeah, well, it was cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's... And then, uh, then I started taking lessons from uh, the conservatory number one and for classic guitar, and then number two, I took a steel string guitar a little bit with, uh, with a man called Bob Neview. He was in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And we got invited, we went to a concert. We went to a concert, uh, you know, the, the guitar concert. Mm -hmm. It's a club, right? And uh, we met Edgar Munch, and he was one of really important person in my life. And basically, what we did, you know, he invited us to his house, so we went there for a snack, dinner, whatever the hell it was, you know. And um, I made a comment to him. I had to speak English at that point because the, the person I was with, uh, Bob, he didn't speak a word of French. Okay. So, you know, I, I mentioned to Edgar that, you know, I would give anything to be a guitar maker. He says, well, come in tomorrow. <laughs> because he liked me because I could speak a few languages and he liked the fact that, that I, I could do that. Uh -huh. And he spoke French perfectly, Russian, perfectly. Mm -hmm. And anyway, to make a long story short, the next day I went home and then I said, God, that, that can't be. How can that be? Nobody but I makes went. guitars. <laughs> yeah, but I went. So I went and we started and he started teaching me. I wasn't working for him. I was learning from him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to start my, my own guitar right there and then, like almost the first day. You know, all of a sudden it gives me a back, it gives me a top, and I have to glue it and sand it uh, with no machines, just manually, right? And so, so I did that, and uh, I built my first guitar, and we still have it. Oh, wow. Yeah, we still have it, and that's 54 years ago. Yeah, that's a long great. time. 1967 or so, right? Yeah. An interesting little note about it, it's, uh, it's got teeth marks all up and down the neck, that's my other son. His other son was very young and used to crawl on the guitar and gnaw <laughs> and on the bite, neck. And bite the guitar. So the most priceless Larrave ever made has John Jr.'s bite marks all up and down the neck. That's so awesome. That <laughs> and so not cool. just him, the other ones also yeah. did. Because the guitar was always in the living room, right? And right. So, and I knew it was never going to be sold or traded or do anything, right? And so... Basically, that's it. That's the beginning of it, mm -hmm. you know. And finally, I left the automotive industry and started working in my basement. I lived in a townhouse with a basement and got a few tools and made guitar one, sold it, made guitar two, sold it. And next thing you know, I'm a guitar maker. Yeah, how about that? And now, all these years later, making beautiful instruments. And I, I like the motto of the company, which is luxury guitars at reasonable prices. Or I don't know if that, that's your official right. motto or not, but it's something I picked up from your. Uh, well, your it's site. it's quite interesting because you know if if you know John, John came from truly humble beginnings. You know, he grew up in a in a shack, 
and uh, you know it, it was a it was a tough time in in French Canada, and uh, you know he he came you know you heard his first guitar was twelve dollars, yeah, and that stuck with him his whole life and and part of our you know our our mission is you know we want to create guitars that you know people like in his situation can afford and can. Uh, you know, last a lifetime. They're not a piece of junk. They're right. they're a real instrument for real people and yeah. for real musicians, right? So th right. those roots, you know, he's given that to me, and I give that to my son as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, there, there's a, a something I saw somewhere where you said you build each guitar to last at least a hundred years. At least. At least. At least. Yeah, that's yeah. the key. And right? I think I think this is really an important thing because the guitars that, first of all, I design. And, uh, you know, I could see other makers' guitars. In those days, you'd get cracks, you'd get all kinds of wooden guitars with made at the wrong humidity. So the first thing I learned is humidity. And I'm adamant about it, you mm -hmm. know, like a guitar has to be in a certain room for 72 hours and it has to do this, it has to do that, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Power goes out, there's no work tomorrow. You know, I mean, you work, but you do other work. Right, right. And mm -hmm. for that, uh, you know, the idea of the guitar lasting a century, this is goes back to our training, to your, you know, one of your very first comments, which is we have this rich tradition of guitar making. You know, he was trained by Edgar, I was trained by John, but before Edgar, Edgar was trained by uh, Marcelo Barbero, and before that, uh, Ramirez the second, right. Ramirez the first, all the way back to Francisco Gonzalez, who was you know, one of the main <coughs> founders of the Madrid School of Guitar Making back in the early 1800s. So, right. I mean, the, the tradition goes back almost two centuries, and those guitars are over a century old, and that tradition continues yeah. today. Right. right, right. And the interesting part about humidity, right, the guitar lasting 100 years, an acoustic guitar doesn't last 100 years as a rule. It has to be made at a certain temperature, certain humidity. And most of the people I dealt with, Manuel Velasquez, you know, Edgar Munch, they didn't have humidity control. They had, the only humidity control they had was how to humidify a room, not dehumidify mm -hmm. a room, right? And both are important. You know, the, the magic number is 42%. Uh, you know, humidity at 72%. 72 uh, degrees. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's the most important. And I spent, you know, 20 years maybe learning about it. Mm -hmm. And so all the guitars that we made, I can virtually guarantee if you take care of it, it'll last 100 years. Right, right. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So every guitar is solid wood. Yep. It's yep. got your personally designed X bracing scheme that you developed through the years, and all the little details and touches that you put into those. Yes, correct. Yep. John's involvement, because of my involvement, and my mom's, and my brothers, and my sisters, my kids, our name is on the headstock. It has to be better, right? We constantly improve. We find new ways to do things. Technology yeah. advances, uh, and so the guitar that we make today is the best Larabate ever made. Right. The, the guitar that's right here is better than the guitar we made last year that looks the same or right. 10 years ago. And the guitar tomorrow will be better still. One thing I like to use to, I, I like to say about our guitars, I, I love hamburger analogies. Mm -hmm. And so when, <laughs> when, you look at, when you look at our guitars, I look at our range of guitars as a hamburger. Okay. Right. The most basic guitar we make is a plain hamburger, and the most expensive fancy guitar is a deluxe cheeseburger with lettuce and mayo and bacon. I should but write the, that down. Yeah. But the, <laughs> the fundamental part of it is the burger is the same, mm -hmm. right? The meat and the bun is the same on every guitar, right? And that meat and bun is the quality of the woods, our bracing patterns, and our construction method, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't change regardless of no. whether it's a you know, $1,500 guitar or a $12,000 guitar. The involvement on the floor with the family, on the, on the production floor, and that is that all of my family works very closely on the production side. We, we barely, we barely mm -hmm. have offices for a company of our size, which is very unusual. You know, my mm -hmm. office is in front of a table saw, right. you know. And, uh, you know, you will find us every Larave guitar that's out there has, you know, yes, we have a 
boatload of employees, but we all have worked on the guitar. So it's not uncommon to have a minimum, at an absolute minimum, four Larivés touch every guitar, right. and up to seven Larivés touch each guitar. So it's three yeah. generations now, or is it four three generations? Three generations. So my, yeah. my dad started the company in 1967, uh, my brother joined in 86, 87. I joined in the early 90s. Uh, and my son just graduated high school. And, uh, you know, he's gone into the, the trade of guitar making. Nice. And my daughter comes in over the summer and always helps out, runs, you know, runs equipment and right. helps me out whenever she can. And, uh, you know, and my mom is, uh, you know, my mom owns half the company and runs, you know, runs all the offices and handles all of the inlays and the, right. the artwork. Yeah, I was gonna, I was yeah. gonna mention that, Wendy. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wendy. And she but does she, a beautiful inlay design. Yep. Oh, just very stunning. beautiful. And for years and years, we've been doing that. She works in, she works in the office part time. She works on on the floor part time. Mm -hmm. uh, part time meaning she, uh, you know, she does half and half. Sure. Yeah. And uh, we she, have. She's a, the brains of the operation. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're not very smart. We're not very smart. <laughs> but he's smarter, she's the but brains. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. You know, but we have our main office is in Canada still. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have, uh, we have main. Uh, my daughter works out of uh, Calgary, Alberta, and she does invoicing. Or what the hell does she do? She does invoicing, order yeah. entry. She <laughs> just she helps out. She, uh, you know, she lives there with her husband, and then we have an office in Kelowna, British Columbia, where our, our all the our accounting is done out of. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we actually, we were a little concerned about that at first, but it's worked out really well really because well. we are not tied to an office, mm -hmm. right? We're we're on the floor yeah. when we need something. We phone the office, and they take care they of take it. Take care of it, sure. And every guitar you work on, everyone, pick it up and realize that. It's going to be somebody's family heirloom. You know, I almost tear up saying it because it's important. But <laughs> it, it uh, you know, somebody is going to buy this, and when they die, they're going to give it to their child. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to mean something. We get, you know, we're at the age now, we've had enough guitars out there that we get emails and phone calls or people stopping by for a tour that said, my, you know, my father left me a, a, a DO3 from, uh, you know, 1992, and he left it to me, and it just means the world to me, and yeah. I just want to shake your yeah. hand. Oh, that's so awesome. Strumming the guitars, playing them finger style. Do you feel like there's a particular style player that a Larry guitar is going to be appropriate for? I think, I think the finger style is where we excel in our standard line. What John did really up until about 2004 was really geared towards finger style players. Mm -hmm. And before that, we... You know, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, we had we had dabbled with the uh, the the bluegrass style. That's a really weird term to use, but bluegrass style, the Tony Rice, mm -hmm. you know, enlarged sound hole. You know, we didn't, you know, we we played with it a little bit, and then in uh, in 2004, we came out with a, a new line of guitars we call the 50 and 60, and uh, and then. That was the expensive version, and we came out with a model which became an explosion for us, which was the the forty series. And uh, this guitar, we came up with a new bracing method. It's a it's a hybrid between our symmetrical bracing, uh, which John developed himself in the uh, in the nineteen seventies, and the more um, modern scallop bracing. So it's a a hybrid between these. And what this did is this gave us a completely separate line of guitars to fill two different players' requirements. So our standard line really, really excels at, at finger style, whereas the modern, the 40, and the 44, the 50, and the 60 all are really geared towards bluegrass style music, okay. yeah. uh, flat picking and so on. So it's mm -hmm. you can any player can find any sound that they want in our line depending on where you look you know and one of the guitars that surprises me constantly is our little parlor guitar right uh which was a total accident when we made it we we set out to make it but i messed up uh, i was trying to shrink a body and I, I i was supposed to shrink in all directions and i went just one direction and i went huh i like that <laughs> <laughs> and that that became the parlor um but that little guitar is a little blues monster. Huh. You know, it's got this boxy, bluesy tone that yep. I just love. 
you know, and so you, anybody can find any sound they want in our line. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, it's that attention to detail and the way you guys have just optimized everything about it. it, it the sound of the guitars and the response to them does remind me a bit of a classical guitar. It has mm -hmm. that mid-range and the balance right. that's, that's so even across, mm -hmm. which I associate with a lot of uh, the really good nylon uh, string instruments, that's which you're right. getting it with a steel string, which is, yeah. which is fantastic. But yeah. the classic, again, classic is a whole different ballgame. Of course, right. Okay? And the classic uses a one-piece neck, mm -hmm. you know, with the heel, the, everything is all one piece. Right. And that's what Ramirez, you know, and all the, you know, Manuel Velasquez, all those great makers, they use that joint. Mm -hmm. and the okay. dovetail is the closest it's to the it closest, you can get. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's like I say, it's that yeah. uh, that it, attention to detail and, and the way that you've shaped all that. This yeah, we tell our, our customers and our, my employees and our customers that the thing that makes Larave unique is the Larave recipe. Right. So, and I, I had a discussion with an employee last week who was struggling a little bit. And, you know, I talked to him. He was, he was doing a job his way. He was reaching a pretty decent outcome, but he wasn't doing it the way I wanted to do it, the Larabe recipe. And I had to sit down with him and say, like, look, what makes this guitar successful is that these steps are followed and they don't, they don't vary. You may not realize why you're doing it. Your outcome might look the same, but it, you have to follow this recipe, right? And the recipe that, you know, what makes a Larabe sound the way it does is, really good tight construction, joints that fit perfectly together, you know, necks that fit absolutely perfectly on, neck angles that are dead spot on, um, you know, it's, it's that uh, tight fitting craftsmanship that really makes the Larave sound like it does. The wood and the bracing, that's a big part of it, and, but it's the construction, the method with which it's made that makes the guitar special. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that gives me a, a, a great transition to, I think that's what will make a great partnership between Sweetwater and Larry because we also have our approach to the way that we do things here, Absolutely. the way we handle yeah. customer service. And I know you've been out to the guitar shop and seen some of the things that we, yeah. we do there. And so that, that's why I think this will be a great yeah. uh, partnership between the two companies. So yeah. one of the things that it, you know, I talked about earlier is the guitars we make today are the best we've ever made and the guitars we make tomorrow will be even better. And that's because both John and I are open to learning into new methods. Mm -hmm. You know, so one of the things yeah. I came and visited here uh, a few months ago, and I I really liked the the Sweetwater inspection method. I loved how when I came here, I could see you know a line of Sweetwater inspection technicians looking over every guitar. They would pick it up and they would measure everything and look and inspect it under multiple forms of light, and I looked at that and I said, I want to do that. Yeah. You know, and Sweetwater worked with me. They, uh, as, a, as a supplier, they came to me and I said, what, is the, what do you guys use to do this? And they, they sent me a list of, oh, this is the bench we use, this is the lighting, this is this, this is that. And now we have a company have grown. Our inspection method is now in line with Sweetwater's. Oh, nice. And we're a better company. That's awesome. Right? So... The guitar that we now produce is better than it was even just three months ago. Well, that's fantastic to right. hear. Yeah. So Sweetwater has been a great partner to help us improve even further. Right. Right. And and we're continuing. You know, we're continuing that now. We've got one bench. Now we're setting up multiple benches for people and training them in in that method because it's great. Yeah. You know? oh, awesome. Yeah, but the most important is nothing has changed. The changes that we make in the guitar are so minuscule. Mm. You can't imagine, if you look at a guitar from 40 years ago and look at a guitar today, if you open it up, they look the same. Mm -hmm. It's just finer detail, like moonwood, like uh, just the rosewood quality, just everything about it. it. We just made some leaps and bounds in little tiny thing. Sure. We have no intentions of doing any major change this, change that, put the braces this way. That's not our, our goal. We like what we make. Yeah. You know. Well, and rightfully so. They're beautiful guitars. Yep. Thank We're you. so proud to have you guys here at Sweetwater. It's been a, a real pleasure to get to sit down with you. and, the and chat all ours. This. I mean, it's just, they're, what can I say? They're just fantastic. So. Yeah. Well, thank uh, you so much. Welcome thank aboard. You. Yeah. We're so glad to have you here. Matt? Yeah. John? Yes, Great sir. to see you. Yes. And thank you for joining me here at Sweetwater. If you have questions about Larry Guitars, please be sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. You can find everything that you need to know up there. They'll be happy to help you out. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.